and welcome back from break, ladies and gentlemen. We've swift, we've switched spots, and I am Dolson here on the desk. Alongside me is Nick, Pretty Hair. Nick, great, uh, great first set we had there, huh? Definitely, right. You, you're seeing a new team versus a a bit of a more seasoned roster, and that's kind of what we're expecting. Right. Frankly, I would have bet on for the family to get blown out a little bit harder than they right. did. Again, that is a that is a land championship roster, right? That is the first team not only from Europe to win something in the console series, but the first PS4 team to win something as well. They have a lot of great players and a lot of experience. And if that is a, sort of a foreshadowing of any of the types of quality of matches right. we're going to get across the league here, then I'm I'm very excited excited for the season of console certainly can't count anyone out and that storyline may continue on as we look into our second matchup here of the day we have viral gaming yep. and we have cyclone and viral is an entirely rookie squad whereas cyclone right. is a squad built off of players who have been around in the league right. a little while so viral has something to prove here i think and if a rookie squad can kind of do that well against a very very seasoned and successful team right then certainly a rookie squad should be able to do sure. fairly well here against a cyclone who while not you know as winning as flashpoint they certainly have some experience right they're made right. of a of a bit of a ragtag band a couple guys from this team a couple right. guys from that team and uh, a little bit more in between and to that point you do have players from Radiant, some Flashpoint players. We just saw them playing very well. And Vexed on the side of Cyclone. Uh, and then on the side of Viral, obviously all new rookie players. So yeah. not too much history to look at there. But we are going to jump into the first bit of map selection here for game one between these two teams. And we see Bright Marsh coming out with Fish Market Timber Mill Band out for Cyclone, Serpent Beach, and Ascension Peak Band out huh. on the side of Viral. Okay. So for Cyclone... Fish Market, Timber Mill, not very standard maps uh, that you would expect to see here in these best of five sets. These, you know, potential to be shorter, potential to be only three maps like we just sure. saw. So Bright Marsh will be the first one. We will have Warder's Gate up and available. I'm curious to see if that map in particular, right? Because, I, you know, it's the newest map. Haven't gotten to see it on console yet, right? I want to see right. if they play it any different from the minor league guys that we were watching play it sure. uh, during the qualifiers over there. And Cyclone deciding they don't want to deal with the Torvald. We saw such success coming out of that Torvald Victor stack yeah. in that first map there for Flashpoint. And uh, Khan getting banned out on the other side as well. And Nara Grover, the last two bands on this side. We'll From what I've seen so far, right, you have you have Talus, you have Sky, you have Koga. And while none of that is banned here, sure. that is all top of the tier list for Come things on, to pair with, with Torvald, right? right? Champions who have natural weaknesses that are covered up extremely well by Torvald. That's the type of stuff we're looking to see kind of we banned out or picked here. And again, the fact that it, none of it's banned out here, I expect to see at least some of it. Torvald, you know, he really, really compliments what's strong on console. Champions I right. are made no, by I the agree. And they choose. You see Ash, the Barrick, Makoa, Victor. So there's the Victor. We're used to seeing him here, but Viral going with a pretty Games. tanky emphasis yeah. here in their first couple picks. Saris rounding out the Cyclone Gaming's first three. It certainly is. It's, Have you met my it's friends? Uh, interesting to note as well the Grover being a uh, Clearly a priority ban here sure. on console as well as it is. So it still does what it does uh, extremely well on PC mortal. as it does on console. We will see a little Fury, maybe a little Beam gameplay. I like this coming through here from Team Viral. One thing that I do Time want to, to note our is that we are seeing uh, our first barrack of the day here. And this go is going to be Bright Marsh. This is going to be pretty point-centric. I like, again, the Inara bands here. Come this is a very, very boy. different flavor. This almost feels more PC minor league to me right. than it does that last console draft between uh, uh, Flash point for the family and we also see Take i think ruckus look. and furia coming out for the for first long. time yeah for both sides sky making her second appearance for the day so quick thoughts on both these lineups who do you give it to good luck uh i think surviving this barrage of poison bolts from sky i like team viral's lineup here actually i think if they can continuously land these beams barrack will be kind of the premier point frontliner in this game and they can maybe survive against cyclone so Nick giving Viral Gaming the edge here. Cyclone certainly can't count them out as they are the veteran returning squad on their side, but we'll have to see how things play out here. But we will see how it plays out as we get into map number one. Here's Evan and Gore on the call. Thank you, Dave. Rain Day and Gormizer here to bring you through the action in our second set of the day. It is Bright Marsh, of course, where we start things off, home of the Volpines and home of the Game 1 winner, although that eventuality will be seen in just a moment as we test out these uh, relatively aggressive lineups 
on both sides in many ways. Welsh Mania on that Ruckus. That's the thing I'm kind of looking at here. I feel like he could be a major champion in this matchup, Gore. Yeah, not only him, but having Smunny, having Slabadavos, like, like we mentioned it, but a ton of names. The thing that kind of catches me off guard is you have Harvey on a support. I've never seen Harvey play a support because yep. on Flashpoint he was always going for that front line, but it's going to be an interesting pickup. Ruckus, as you noted, probably one of the most game-changing champions when played properly, and I feel like Welsh Mania is probably the one who can uh -oh. not only perform it, but make it work. <laughs> uh, it's I love how we, we went away from the camera, but the moment I saw that, I'm like, Vivian's dead. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Ruckus has three missiles, and she's only got, what, 2K health or something? It's over. 1,500 damage, a couple of mini guns to finish it off. This is a team-wide for sure. Cyclone GG started off strong, and now they're looking to zone here. Now, this is actually kind of what I was wondering. Like, I hear where, like, Nick's point, you know, coming yep. through. Sky in this scenario will shred everybody on Cyclone. But Sky has to be able to get there. Yeah. Sky has to be able to yep. survive long True. enough to get there. And when I'm looking at I'm looking at a Victor, I'm looking at a Bomb King, I'm looking at this Ruckus, and I'm just looking at these kills that are going to come through. Tully finally going to be able to get a couple of kills early on, and that is the performance you need. That's the kind of game-changing experience you can have, but they already lost the point. It is just a day late and a dollar short right there, isn't it? That double kill coming right after the thing they were fighting for has been lost. So a small battle, but they lose the war still. In the grander scheme of things, that war is being fought. They have a chance to hold here, do it right next time, and uh, try to get their feet back underneath them. Two minutes now before this push is over. Smutney dies for the second time to Poison Bolts, and that is one truth. You cannot underestimate the damage Sky brings in this meta right now, uh, and just the consistency of her weapon fire, getting the extra yeah. ammo on base, but also just the ability to have unlimited ammo with her loadout cards. And honestly, this is where Viral can prove themselves, right? You can't really be made or broken by this Sky. Like, it's going to excel your performance or it's going to deteriorate your performance, yep. but you have to have something coming out of the Vivian, out of the Barrack, out of the Ash, otherwise, because you end up in this scenario where it's just like, okay, cool, we kill your Sky, you have zero team fight. we just push you back out. Unfortunately for Cyclone, they weren't able to get entire control. But again, you're looking at the cooldown on the Poisoner, you're looking for Poison Bolts coming up a lot into a very tanky lineup. Yeah. Ruckus, Makoa, Bomb King, all three of them just not going to live long, as long as Tully can live. And, and I think it's going to be a very frustrating game here for everyone involved. Uh, I think Team Viral have so many threats that Cyclone GG are going to find themselves just getting melted and melted and just so much damage. Smutney's barely been able to live. Uh, but on the other side of things, I think Team Viral are going to feel pressured. Once Smutney and Welsh Mania get a little momentum, they're going to feel it's going to be so hard to stall it out. They're going to have to use ultimates like they just did. Ash slamming down with that war cry, asserting her dominance there in the corner. But she's also isolated from her team, and now Delane goes down, and it looks like Barrack Slaya. He's going to be slayed as well. Tully's going to fall to Welsh. And this is the snowball they did not want. And doing exactly what they need, right? Two big hit scan pressures. Welsh Mania maybe not going to put out as much damage per bullet as you're going to see out of Slapadopoulos, but it's still the two of them combined. Rockets, grenades, and that pressure from their just machine guns is going to cause so much distress for Viral, right? It's hard to take that onslaught of damage and yeah. recognize where you need to turn around, who you need to focus on, and where the bullets that you're shooting yeah. need to go. The bop, bop, bop of Vivian. Three, two, it's standard practice here in Paladin. She's got the opportunity in Chaos, but the push is defended successfully. I almost thought it got pushed in. Somebody was sneaking it through, but that's going to be it. They hold strong, and it is really all of the kills coming through from Delane and Tully. Tully running one of the more common loadouts for Vivian. Just contingency five, really one step ahead five. That 30% movement speed, it's such a different feeling champion when she's yeah. that much faster. And that's one of the things we see with a couple of these champions that just don't have that inherent ability to Point dash, to jump, to leap, seconds. to get away. It's just, man, I'm really slow. I need to just get <laughs> out of here a little bit faster. Right. And, I mean, you're looking at being able to not have to look at Nimble, right? This is going to right. just say, look, I don't need Three, to buy an item two, to augment it. Yes, one. I'm losing a card in my loadout, but admittedly for Vivian, like that's probably the best value card you're going to get. Right. It saves your life a lot and it allows you to kind of dance around these walls, peek in, peek out, to keep up with someone like Victor who can just hustle away. Oh, and the 
the Sentinels do come out here. Smutney clearly has an Ancient Rage. The way you can know is that when you're Vivian, you have your Sentinels and you're aiming at him, he doesn't care. <laughs> and that obviously should give you a clue that he has something in the back pocket. Now Vivian is here. He's doing his best to dodge, throws up the Shell Shield, but Welsh Mania applies the perfect flank and finishes him off. It's another zone potential. And the dismounts here could lead to another point cleanly captured by Cyclone. I mean, the way that they're holding on to this, the way that they aggress into this, the way that they are reading what Viral yep. want to accomplish, it's just working out perfectly for them. And honestly, I was going to say coming into this round, if Kings can get a performance on Bomb King the way that we're seeing Victor and Ruckus play, then this game's over. Yeah. It's really going to be dependent on That's true. how even it stays is based on where is Bomb King sitting. Makoa's getting aggressive, but if Bomb King starts getting these kills the same way the rest of his team is, I don't know if Viral can answer. Slopidopolis doing a great job of finding the damage. Well, mean has been holding this role down for a while. Uh, but Smutney, it's important to talk about the fact that he was the number one most healing uh, that achieved in last year's PCL split. And it just goes to show that now switching onto the front line, I believe Smutney used to play on PC as well a long time back. Yeah. Just a versatile player who knows Paladins in and out, can flex on any role, and that's so valuable for a team uh, in this console league. And with the way he has... The experience, I guess, is the better way to put it. It's yeah. not just the, oh, you played in the console league, but he has been playing for well over a year at this competitive level. Being able to kind of bring that experience in for your team, that expertise in for your team to give yeah. them like, look, this is what we do in this scenario. Like, I only know it because I've seen it four times, you know, in a year, but it's a rare scenario. I know how to deal with it. Or even the more common ones where it's just like, this is the way the team has to approach. This is how our communication has to be broken down. Like, that kind of thing brings a team together like no other. Wow, that's a lot of damage right there, Gore. Unfortunately, it looks like Kings is going to get taken down by Slaya. And if that bear just didn't finish the Bomb King there, this would be a totally different moment. He's going to get the Solar Blessing as well. And that's the tricky nature of these fights. There's so much damage on the board for both teams that one misplay means you got to reset yeah. and try it once more. Keeping Slopadopoulos alive. At this point, maybe just trying to keep the streak going, but also he's going to give a streak back to whoever can kill him. Even on 11, it's going to be enough that you don't want to lose him and ranked getting right into their face. This is where Ash, I think, is going to shine most. Yep. We haven't really gotten to see her do too much. And again, I feel like it's because Viral's comp kind of feels like Tully here is the president. Yep. You have to protect the president. Yep. You have to keep him alive. You have to keep him going. The minute he's gone, everybody falls back and disappears. Oh, and that beam used offensively as well. That is the... Uh a really nice play there coming from the period. Lane helping to finish off that kill. Almost breaks the shield in time. A good hook as well. This could turn some defense into offense, and it does. Smutney stays alive, still getting healed. He's so low, but he finds two kills for Slopidopoulos. And now it's a 5v3. They could press this, but I don't know if Ash is the one you want to press. They can't find this guy yet. Here she is, the time bomb. They try to just stay alive here because she knows if she dies, it is a full snowball, and that's looking like what it's going to be. Harvey going to be able to get some good healing on this oh. money. And they're going to go into overtime, but Bright Marsh is a smaller map. Overtime is feasible, and even though you're going to tick through right here, I mean, you have a full health now, Ancient Rage ready, Makoa looking right at your face. You got to get something. If he gets a heal here, I think it's obvious, but he can't because Harvey was killed, but no one's finishing off him. The body blocks from the payload are so good, and it almost works out. Duffman rules, has to step over and kill the front line himself, but now Harvey is back. They have lost three members, and this is the snowball. They've never fought with five members alive until they lost those early two from Slopidopolis. That's what Bright Marsh can do. They still have four, but they're waiting for the sky. A good convergence oh. as well. The bombs can't hit. Oh, they back off. It must have been a kinetic burst from Ash. And after the convergence, they can't push it through. A nice knockback, and it was just that that awkward timing, right? Longer you're in overtime, the faster that overtime bar goes down, and that's a perfect example. Ruckus is off for a second. Makoa dashes in. like It is like that shining moment in yep. a movie, right? You're playing it in slow-mo as he's trying to get to the line, but it doesn't end the way they want. Not he quite. is just a little bit too late. And that's, I mean, the way that it seems to be going. Like, Smutney's 1-6. and six. That's really, really misleading for the amount of control he's bringing to the game. But everybody else, not only positive, but doing a ton of work. And again, I'm just saying, Kings, at 5, 4, and 5, like, if you change that to, like, a, let's say, 8, 4, and 5, yep. like, the game goes a lot smoother. But 2-2, two, two, I still think Cyclone has the point fight. I, I completely agree with you there. It's, it's clearly been a... Uh, it just a maneuver, kind of, to try to figure out, okay, how do we just maximize this, make as little mistakes as possible? I think Cyclone GG have felt fully in command of this game. I just feel like they know that they can die. And that's what's scary. You don't want to get overconfident here. The Inflame Sky with the Poison Bolts, 
And, uh, oh man, just that constant damage, not even having to reload, that is very scary. The King Bomb actually gets activated, and he decides not to go for it. That might have been a huge mistake from Kings, and he's going to go down here as well. If he can get the heal from Fury, this could be so bad. He runs up to Slavodopolis, and he's going to finish her off, but the last Barrage Rocket's going to take her down as well. I mean, just good presence of mind from Tully. There's going to be the Ancient Rage to try and keep Smutty into the fight. He's going to do whatever he can, but he's fighting under a dome shield, no. and that <laughs> never ends well. Delane going to get credit for the kill, but this is a perfect fight from Viral. They're playing this amazingly. The Inflame was perfect, and you know what? If you use your ults first, sometimes you can just keep that <laughs> advantage rolling. Bidey loves to talk about it, but now we're seeing it in action. Welsh Mania cannot sustain. They couldn't sustain his five sometimes. There's that much damage on the board, but you're definitely not sustaining against a Vivian, a Sky, getting healed by a Ooh. Solar Blessing Furia on the point staring at you. But Kings has another chance to do it. He just loses out again. Tully has definitely taken this game by storm. Incredible fight, and that's 3-2 now, Cyclone. Fine. I give it a whole mix of factors that go well. Wow. First off, you're looking at this damage. Tully is just eviscerating. People. I don't think there is another word for it. Like, they are literally just 100 to 0. He does not care. And that is going to be the debilitate percentage damage yep. that is being done with these poison darts. But you also have to kind of look at a little bit of the falters and the trip ups from Cyclone, right? That King Bomb yeah. was charged. It looked really good. It could have gotten maybe four people. And then he just canceled it immediately. And was like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to fight. And then yep. Tully's like, cool. cool. I'm coming on well, in. Well, I'm still fighting. <laughs> and, you know, would it have been, like, he knew he was, might die there, but would it have been a trade worthwhile if you do have just a, a Vivian and the Fury instead of a Vivian? True. The Sky and the Fury, maybe that does work out for you. But you had to take that risk. Uh, I, and I think personally a risk is being taken either way. You either yeah. King Bomb and don't do it, and then now you're vulnerable. They know you don't have it. Or you try to go get a kill. Unfortunate there for Cyclone. But Team Viral looking good here, and this is what we were talking about. A minute and 20 now for the push. They can win the game off of this. Cyclone now on the defense for the first time, and this can be a little precarious. And already having to deal with Tully's damage here, but uh -oh, having time so bomb. much trouble. Time bomb oh. just barely gets out of it. And that is going to be like one of those moments where Tully, I mean, he really doesn't care. He's still got all the damage, but that would have been a nice kill to pick up, like yeah. icing on the cake. Yeah, and what I like about it is he still ends up finding a kill on the BK. And we've seen him use it several different ways. We've seen him use it to actually Jeez. heal, like, just by time and space, which is a, a different use because we haven't seen Sky played very often in high-level play. He's been very situational. The yeah. ult usually tries to kill people, but it can zone people. It can separate a team. It just forces people to run or die. And uh, it's very much like a dome shield in that way where you just got to get away for a second. And, I mean, that kind of control, just buying your team a second even, is going to afford so much room, especially on yep. a map like Bright Marsh. And being able to come to the side, having the shields that you do coming down from an Ash and a Derek, like, everyone's kind of looking at the front lines. They make a lot of noise. There are a lot of visual effects that you want to look at this Ash, get rid of this Ash. And so Tully can kind of come in around the side and uh -oh. potentially get a lot of damage because of it. Yeah, Kings is clearly uh, not had a great game here because of Tully. It's really Welsh Mania and Slopadopoulos who are keeping uh, this guy in check, and, and maybe that's the way it should be. Harvey on a 10 streak, trying to stay alive. This is so important. The Solar Blessing whiffs, but it does stun Harvey, and that puts him in a Bit of a spot where he probably would rather not be. Bear getting healed up as we speak. Slaya gets the nice little uh, small healing from Fury up. Misses the beam entirely, so Delane is forced to take that frontline roll and try to keep overtime alive. I mean, kills are still coming out here for Viral. They're still able to hold on as best they can, but you're holding on against uh -oh. respawn proximity. You don't have anything. Tully's going to have to do a lot of uh -oh. work, but he has the time bomb already. Not going to be able to find the kill on either of the targets. And even if there's overtime, I mean, this is a downhill battle, or an uphill battle, I guess, if you're going to Yeah, it depends, right? Well, they're going for it. Oh, he gets stunned midair thanks to the Grumpy Bomb. The timing was off, and maybe it works out for them in the end, Gore, because I'm not gonna, I'm not sure you would have wanted an ult there. I mean, I, I, I think that's a bit risky. Yeah. Now at least you're heading in with four ults after already using the Time Bomb to five ults from Cyclone GG in this final point fight. But the good thing about having, or for ranked, having your ult still is, you know, you can ignore a King Bomb. Like, yeah, you stun me. Yeah, you can dump a bunch of damage into me. I have eight seconds here that I'm just undamageable. The same thing can kind of go for looking at an Ancient Rage, having to deal with a barrage. Like, that damage immunity for Ash is so good if used properly, but it's getting it off in time and making sure that you can actually put yourself in that good position on Bright Marsh. That, I feel, is going to be shanky here. Yeah. And now we go into the last point fight of the game with King Bomb. This didn't get any value last time, Gore. So if it gets some value, <laughs> that will be better than what has occurred. Anything is an improvement. Anything is an improvement. 
And there it is. Poppy Bomb up to the top. You can take a little mount jump so you can save your movement skill, but in three seconds, it'll be back up. He's going for the dunk, but there the dunk is. gets right back. Rejected, says Ash. But then Ash gets pulled out, ranked. Oh no, he's almost dead. 21 healthy makes it back into his circle, but he runs into Welsh and Smutney cleans him up anyways. The inflame is used. Oh, defensively, and that's not how you want to use that ultimate, my friend. And this is not looking good for Viral, but there's still hope. I mean, Tully is the one that can make or break this. A beautiful hook going to cause a lot of distress for him, and he does get the kill there on Smutney. So being able to get that set up, you have yep. your Ancient Rage. You don't have to deal with these Poison Darts. Move forward. Exactly what he's doing. Just get this. in their face. Get aggressive. Dismount. Distract. Even and more. And keep holding on for your team. Yeah, I mean, don't. I mean, just, just, just literally hold W at Fury. I mean. Uh, and this feels like he's just deciding so many things, maybe trying to keep <laughs> everyone back. And in the way, he has kept two people out of the fight, which I appreciate. Cancels the ult so he can get it just some shots off. But Delane is getting damage off now, and this is not what you wanted. You don't want this Vivian helping at all, but it doesn't matter because the overtime is taking away. They're all dead. And uh, he says, I got it done the way I felt I needed to. Smutney knowing exactly how to pressure the support because he's been pressured as a support so often in the league. I just have to give a lot of credit. I mean, Slopidopolis did incredibly well. Welsh Mania had the presence that you need out of a ruckus, right? Always in their face, always getting kills, always causing either a distraction and making Sky look at him to kill him off yeah. or killing her before she can get to any of his teammates. I mean, he was kind of the barrier that you had to break through to get to the rest of the team. I really love, I mean, the way we've seen Smutney seamlessly transition onto that, but you're, you're right. Slopidopolis was fantastic. Kings had a bit of a rough game, but it, it is a very rough matchup against True. the Sky if you can't see her coming. So much burst. Let's send it back to the deck with Dave and Pretty Air and see what they thought about game one. So Nick, Viral Gaming does end up falling, but they do put on a great show, especially for a squad comprised entirely of rookies. Yeah, I mean, good stuff from them, certainly. Just a little bit of a difference, I think, in the pacing right. set by these drafts, right? We had some great moments from that sky in particular, but again, we commented how this draft looked overall kind of like a minor league draft, not so much mirroring what we saw in our first console league draft. Right. We are going to take a look at the post-game stats here to really see the tail of the tape and how things worked out. And Welsh Mania, Slapadopoulos really carrying the weight, at least damage-wise, on the side of Cyclone. And as we expected, Delane and Tully doing a great job there. for That's the a ton of damage from Maracas. I mean, great stuff there from Welsh. Obviously, one of those most experienced players there. Healing numbers pretty heavily in favor of the Cyclone boys as well. Harvey, about 60K out in front of Mr. Duff May and Rules running that Solar Blessing, it's a, not exactly what you would expect to see. Sure. You would expect that Solar Blessing, if it's connecting well, this is like, it's kind of like the highest skill ceiling right. sort of healer talent in the game. When you're connecting that onto your point frontliner, you right. frankly do a very good job at staying on top of the healing charts. And I know it's something that you mentioned in game. Is that Bomb King loadout? potentially a little it weird. Is, it is weird, right? A lot of times you see health, you see a little bit of reload speed, maybe some move speed on kill, and most importantly, you see uh, the health back every time you detonate a sticky bomb. You don't have to hit it. You just literally have to detonate it, which is kind of funny. Right. He went for the uh, complete grumpy bomb cooldown as well as cooldown on kill, which is, you know, it's not bad. It's a style of loadout right. a lot of other champions run, but not really something we're used to seeing from Bomb King. We are going to peek at some replays from that last game, see how some of the action did unfold in favor of of viral gaming yeah. and and a big yeah, thing that i saw was this frontline control baby this makoa in particular obviously a ton of damage for ruckus but makoa did a great job at just walking at people down he didn't let them this is this is when the take back fight is supposed to be happening not when you're running into the cement roadblock that is makoa this healer couldn't really do what he wanted to do here great ancient rage ends up killing this healer and then putting the pressure did eventually get the kill on the vivian just took him a little bit longer so the sky being a big point of talk and mm. the, the bomb king loadout being a big point of talk but that makoa front line really carrying the game is yeah. that is that what you would say yeah really really good stuff there from the makoa i liked what i saw from him but that is going to do it for the analysis for map number one we are going to see how things are going to play out here in map number two which is going to be jaguar falls so a map that most teams should have in their repertoire yep. and most teams do have in their repertoire so what do you see here it's kind of 
it, it, as close as another map gets to another map is Bright Marsh right. Jaguar Falls. There is a small, small amount of high ground on Bright Marsh, and that's honestly one of the biggest differentiators between Jaguar Falls and Bright Marsh is that you really, in my opinion, don't have to worry about drafting any high ground control whatsoever on Jaguar Falls. Sure. There is like literally, objectively, like two places of high ground to stand, and they're, they're these like rickety catwalk things that are very, very exposed from either side. So that's why it's not really that important to do, right? You're having so many other line of sight breaks and so many other angles to play that we never really see it. And it wasn't a big factor in Bright Marsh. I right. don't expect it to be a big factor heal. Um, and we're going to see the Vivian gone as well as Ash and Torvald. So strong tank-minded bands coming out. I like out the Inara bands. Viral. I like Inara bands. Naira answering back to so three of the the high priority hey, tanks immediately taken off the board friend. as well as one of the hit scan threats in Vivian. Mm, so we are going to see a Grok here. Very flexible first Try pick as well. I don't, we, we've only seen it played one way, and it's a way. It's that totemic ward style with CC immunity and higher throughput on your totem. I don't know that we will see that style here, or if we'll see Maelstrom. I don't know. There's a lot of ways you can go with Grok. I, I, it lost. That totemic war game was a loss, so I don't know how viable you want to call that. But the other two are. Heroes, Maelstrom is absolutely viable, um, and you have Spirit's Domain, absolutely viable as well for Grok. So I like that. that that's a good lead dog banners, pick for me. Run. And I think more to that Grok point, we saw Give the Tempest end up missing a lot of targets in that mm. first game where we saw him come out. So sort of Literally a hit or miss champion, whereas a lot of his abilities, you know, can sway a team fight. But you have to find the right targets. You have to find the right people to put those onto. You see Bomb King, you see Saris, Liana Makoa coming out for Viral. So strong but interesting lineup, you would say, for Viral so far. The old eighth pick, Makoa. The one thing I will say about Grok is normally oh, you're trying he's so slotted hard. in later when right. you're picking him as Maelstrom because you're looking for things like Ying, you're looking for things like Barrack. Thankfully, Cyclone have played into that a little bit, picking up the Barrack. You have a turret, you have a stationary target to always guarantee you're going to get a bounce right. off of. But given how early it was and given how this was a solo a solo tank comp, I don't know that it is going to be Maelstrom. I don't know that they need more damage, right? Oh, and it is actually going to be that Grover there, Grover. so this changes everything. Right. Throw that out the window. The it was something I was going to comment on, right? This is something we've seen banned away in a lot in the previous set almost every single time. It was picked once here on Jaguar Falls. Incredibly strong healer, and I definitely love it for Viral. So we see Sky and Talus coming out as the last pick mm. for both teams here, and you know, two relatively high priority flanks rounding out both lineups at an initial glance do you give it to one team or the other uh i definitely want to give it to cyclone again just because of the amount of control that their front line has exhibited in game number one as well as the fact that this comp feels easier to pull off which right. is a big thing for me margin for error is incredibly important in drafting and if you draft something that's very hard to pull off it's not that easy at all absolutely not but big map two coming out here cyclone set the tone on map number one, but we are going to see how things play out. Map number two, here is Rain Day and Gormizer. Thank you, Dave. It's time to get going. Map number one was interesting. Hopefully, this one's just as exciting for all the viewers and for us to watch. That first pick, Grover, finally let out of the ban cage. We'll see some eminence. Leon, she's been dominant lately, and we'll see Kings back on that BK. And Slopidopolis on the Talus. Talus was banned out most of last set. He was. And it's one of those things oh, that you that. typically will see that. And again, I'm going to give a lot of credit to Prosper and Goodlad because they're very good players. So some of the picks that they make look really good don't always work all the way across the scene. Sure. I feel like Slapidopoulos is another one of those players who can make this work, even if maybe Viral aren't valuing it as highly as it should be, or yep. if they're overvaluing it here for Cyclone. But it's going to come through. Guts. Five is probably one of my favorites. Just 30% less damage helps you win some of these boxing matches. And uh, you can tell both of them showing exactly how dangerous their their bite is. It's not just a bark. Talus and Leon can output some serious damage right now. And the fact that he's got transient five means that he's got this this cooldown, this healing up so often. Only six more seconds uh, before he's got it back again. This is going to be very deadly. Uh, and it's one of the reasons I was super excited to see Talus so far 96% for Cyclone GG. It looks like it's going to turn into a clear 100. 
and just the health reset right back to be act acting in safety and starting his own. And it's the way that these cards kind of all work together with his cooldowns. Like, lowering the Rune of Travel cooldown, having the heal off of that, yep. you have Life Part 2, right? Yep. You get to be able to come back into the fight, re-engage. But because of Guts 5, you have more time at the tail end when you're about to die to be yeah. able to, like, I can get a couple more shots off. Like, I can do what I usually think you can do before I have to pop that Rune of Travel. It gives you enough time for a reaction, right. as well as being able to get a little bit more damage out before you finally have to Retreat. And what's so interesting is that many people used Antediluvian as the reason to pick up Talus. Not only his, da I mean, his damage didn't change, uh, but the impact of Antediluvian and the anti-heal effectively changed his ability to keep that damage onto a target before they were healed up, or I guess to finish that target. One of the best things about this that I've seen, though, is that taking that away, Talus has a lot of other great cards. I mean, now he's just got his, his Rune of Travel, Inner Strength, Damage Reduction kind of style up more often. Yeah. Uh, he's got a little bit more lifesteal. Maybe he can add some more movement speed if he feels like it. The versatility of Talus got better, even though his early game just closing potential uh, isn't quite as there without the Cauterize. And that's one of my favorite things about a lot of these champions is actually right now Slaya getting kind of just thrown into the Shark Tank, literally <laughs> at towards a Bomb King. Like, there's no way oh, to get out God. of that. And he's almost a two for one. But, I mean, that... Oh, this is God. the way I wanted to see Kings play last game. This is the way that Cyclone has pretty much been playing. And now yep. that it's all lined up, yeah. the planets are perfectly in order, Viral are definitely feeling the pressure. What would happen if you fell into Jupiter? Did you see that? I, I think that, Have you so been getting recommended pretty that? pretty heavy, right? <laughs> There's literally a video well, that goes into that. Really big. Yeah, I've just been getting recommended it all weekend. You started talking about plants aligning. And I was like, YouTube really wants me to watch this. They, they need <laughs> this you to This video. Know. So I didn't know. Do you actually know the answer? I don't know. Would I'd it have look, to look like it what up. just I mean, happened can... when that bomb exploded <laughs> two people? Yeah, pretty much. I, <laughs> okay. I would assume, like, if you're standing on Jupiter, especially without, like, a suit or anything yeah. to, like, give you some oxygen, I'm, I'm assuming would it would be rough. Yeah. Like, you just die. Okay. All right. Probably. Well, that's pretty simple. I'm not a scientist, but from everything that I've learned. Why do I need four minutes for that? All of my time. <laughs> the, but here's how you die. For that ad yeah, revenue. Yeah, 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 exactly, that right? sweet, sweet ad revenue. God, jerks. YouTubers. <laughs> jerks. I actually watched a video. This is a complete aside, but I watched a video yesterday okay. where the guy left two and a half minutes on the end. Just specifically for that 10-minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. At least be honest about it, baby. That's how, that's how it works. So far, though, Welsh Mania Kings and Sputnik, they know how Paladins works, that's for sure. They have dominated these point fights. Really hasn't been a chance. Talus now just cleaning up what I would assume is the remains of that fight. Delane forced to run back, and Slopidopolis cleaning this up again. I expect Rune to travel maybe around the corner, uh, but he's just going to go ahead and travel back, get to safety, and keep zoning. I mean, the headshot damage, and this is like the pincer. Like, it's kind of misleading. You see their health bars dropping a little faster than they should from just Talus. Yep. But it's partially because Talus is hitting him incredibly hard. But then you see the damage coming from Khan and Barrack on the sides as well. Like, it's just so clean coming yeah. down from Cyclone. And again, the loadouts they have really working for him here. Even though Victor is able to get a lot of damage, this is what we've seen. The story of the day is Victor doing damage. But yeah. I think Slopidopolis is playing the poke game better. Yeah. And I think the problem is that he's just everywhere, right? Because of the Transient 5, which you usually had to give up a lot to run that. You couldn't take Guts 5 and Transient 5, really, in most Talus yeah. loadouts and have what you needed with, you know, Evanescent, obviously with Antediluvian back there. So now that you've got it, he's just so hard to kill. It's just... It's such a pain in the butt to try to finish this guy off. And he's he's, he's aggressing on three different players. And they're like, I can't not deal with Talus damage. Uh, and so it's turning this single front line and what should be its strength into almost like a weakness. And I didn't even look at it the first time around, but he has lifesteal as well yeah. whenever he pops that overcharge. So he's going in, he's shooting him, staying alive longer than he should, has the damage reduction when he gets too low health, teleports back, heals back to full, comes yeah. back, it does it all again. All again. It's just clean. And uh, Cyclone GG, just like that, clean it up. I think the bigger problem here is that you've got Barrick and Khan, you've got yeah. Bomb King, you've got these huge health pools, and then you've got Talus, who's just, he's buying so much time. The three DPS is a good idea in theory, but if without the practical nature of being able to contribute that damage effectively, without getting, you know, wasting your time on these huge health yeah. front lines that can just get away, like Barrick and Khan, uh, it just didn't work out in the end of the day. Honestly, for me, the way I'm looking at it, Viral, they have the play. I Like last game, that was very apparent. They can keep up the fight. Yeah. The things they have to learn, and this is something that you can only get in this competitive environment is the draft, how to deal with a lot of these champions, looking at the way their composition is going and being able to break it down to that last pick. Speaking of break it down, I think we have a desk who'd do that for us. Dave, pretty hair, what do you guys think? We are going to break it down for you. Thank you very much, Evan. Alongside me, Nick. 
kind yeah. of hard to unpack what happened in that game. I mean, it was a 4-0 clean sweep. I think it was a five-minute match. I mean, what what do you see if there's anything to see in a match like that? Well, on, on a map like Jaguar Falls specifically, I love Bomb King, first of all. I think it's like basically his best map. When you pair him with an aggro tank like a Khan or something that can right. get in front of him and make it that much more difficult to bring him right. down, right? he can really take over a game like that. What I didn't necessarily like from the 3 DPS is that you don't have time to, to get anything online. You don't have time to get Cauterize online or Wrecker or, or any of these things that are going to help you control the game where you're not controlling, right? When, you, when you're running the 3 DPS, you don't really pick where the fight happens. You just have more right. damage wherever this double tank comp elects to say, we're going to fight here because we have the tanks. We're going to be controlling this map and just uh, out of control. You know, the brakes were cut the there, so to speak. There. Yeah. I mean, you see three total deaths in an entire oh, game there from Cyclone <laughs> GG and they just they found their rhythm yeah. early on and stuck with it the entire game and never really fell off there. I mean you saw some good damage coming out from Team Viral, but just couldn't find so the at least there's that. damage. <laughs> yeah, right. At least there's yeah, that. At least they that, just... as Victor, you can say, you can look at the scoreboard and say, well, I did all I can. I don't know what else you want from me, team. I got top damage. That's fair. He was was able to at least make some sort of an impact on so, that game. But looking forward to game number three, yeah. is that a pick ban issue that you yeah, see or is it that is. just it's players? at this point like i said you know grok is very flexible but that was or it ended up being the grover there leading with a healer isn't bad when it's grover right sure. but I, right now they're just getting out controlled they're getting outpaced it happened in game number one it happened in game number two as well these guys need to get a stronger frontline lockdown because so many times you'll see the team that gets the stronger frontline whether it's an armico whether it, whatever whatever it is whoever has a stronger frontline oftentimes it doesn't matter who the hell's behind you any right. champion can do that amount of damage right any champion can get the job done if no one's shooting at them and everyone's Fair. on the run and, you know it doesn't matter right that's what right. they're lacking right now is Team Viral needs to grab a front line that can actually command some of the space. I don't think it's it's really a fluke that we have seen in the PPL right. and the PML. Frontliners banned and drafted away so viciously, right? It is a very, very important part of a composition. Right. And we will see map number three coming out here. And Team Viral going to get to select the third map. They are going to select Stonekeep. Do you like this in a position where you've lost 4-3? You hold your own in game one, you fall to a quick 4-0 sweep in game two. Do you like Stone Keep as a third map? Yeah, it's a good way to kind of get things switched up a little bit, right? It's a very different pace from Bright Marsh or Jaguar Falls. This is a map where high ground control is going to be important, right? right? It's something that they can just, you know, get it, get it going. Anything sure. at this point, right? They need to change up the map. They've done that. They need to change up the draft. So far, we'll have to wait and see if they're going to do that as well. Looks like it will still be a pretty heavy frontline ban phase here, as it is it all is. three and Grover. So viral, that's what they need to kind of look at here. Makoa and Nara open for the first time this set as well. I will fight to protect the sanctity of the wild. <laughs> and then but I right off the board, away. she goes. So Cyclone the the taking rivers. arguably the highest priority frontliner that's still available in Inara, and then Makoa, Your Team Viral, answering safe. back with a strong frontliner in Vivian mm. on their side as well. So there's Ruckus left up still, there's Barracks still up, and I think that's choose. fine at that point to the they were grab some with. DPS, right? Grab right. some of the higher priority, because there's no Yay! DPS ban, so at that point, yes. there is an incredibly you know vast pool of higher tier DPS champions open for you, so it's still Lost important that you get some of the strong words. ones there, and they do manage to grab away a Vivian, which has been a very, very popular pick I will bring all day an today. To the we see Barrack Fury. I think that was Cyclone, one of the two teams had the Barrack Furia stack, I believe, on Bright Marsh. Go ahead. Saw Keep some success out can. of it, but the Ruckus, mm. this has not been a pick, at least in come our here, first set boy. of maps that you and I casted today. We didn't see the Ruckus come out very often. This is, do you yeah. like this pick? I do like this pick. I think it can definitely spearhead these kind of charges. Right. They do have a really, really strong point frontliner here in the NAR. Obviously, Saris is a great thing to sort of lifeline that. Keep it standing. And that's going to be matched very well, I think, by the Solar Blessing and Barrack as well. Right. That combination, there's going to be a lot of tankiness and a lot of healing on the point. So it is going to come down to, you know, who's winning these tertiary fights. Makoa versus Ruckus. You know, it's a strong thing, but as soon as Ruckus gets slowed down or caught out, that's when he gets shredded to pieces by things like Talus Vivian. So this Ruckus will have to play very carefully because he does have two kind of rough matchups, to be honest, right. on the opposite side. 
Absolutely. So, going into game number three, we'll see if Cyclone is able to clean it up. But to tell you all about it, here is Rain Day and Gormizer. Thanks, guys. Today we travel to the majestic land of Stone Keep, where cathedrals overlook the bloody battles of the Paladins, champions, the magistrates, all trying to vie for power and glory. And of course, four points. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I was watching a war video. You were. I was getting into it. And the Paladins and Magistrates. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of these days we should cast the fights like we're doing a lore video. Just discussing it as Ceres <laughs> as, as rode a history into battle. That happened. The Paladins rush up the canopy. Talus skirmish on the ground with young Ruckus and Bolt. Natives to his land, but a victim nonetheless. As Victor drew the first blood. I could genuinely I mean, it could I totally watch, happen. I would watch that. It all could day. happen, That'd right? All right, maybe we'll put some effort. History in the action. Yeah, thirty-nine percent though. Cyclone GG, uh, wilding out here, and uh, they have just dominated the, re the last two games. Game two was phenomenal. There was a them. game two. Yeah, I mean, it almost feels like did it even <laughs> happen? But that's the same vi vibe I'm getting from this score. I mean, I haven't had time to toss it off to you. And uh, the point fight's over. And yeah, I mean, admittedly, what's the point? You throw a toss at to me, <laughs> and I break it down as viral just lost. <laughs> but like that is the, what happened with that fight. Viral just lost. They have the towels. They again, they have the tools in the toolbox. But this time, it feels like they don't know how to deal with the onslaught. And it's the same kind of pressure they had in the first game. You yep. have a victor, you have a ruckus, yep. and then you have a bomb king. It doesn't matter what the other two are. Although Saris has been a consistent through all three games, they just know what they're doing. And Kings, again, we said maybe a little rough game one. Game two, he was there. And and now he's turned on. Like, you have exactly what you need as this Bomb King. You're in the zone, and you can find those kills pretty easy once you have that set. Well, Delane's been a nice, uh, you know, aside for these boys as far as definitely holding his own damage-wise. It has not been an easy battle, and Dave was kind of asking Nick if, if he liked this Ruckus pick, and I think this is one of the difference makers, right, for them. Welsh Mania is such a confident Ruckus player, and Ruckus, when he has the freedom to act as his own damage dealer and not really needing to be that tank when you have an Inara who could do that job so well and you could just be tanky yeah. in the back line getting healed and just cause it a ruckus so to speak wreaking havoc uh, you're just in such a great position to uh, take a 1v1 against any damage dealer that exists in Paladins. And at that point I think I'm going to have to give a lot of credit here well, first off a beautiful convergence barrage combo but to Smutney. I mean he's just in their face he's aggressive he as Inara but he's distracting he's been alive again this is something we've seen a lot from Inara today but Almost everlasting. That 5450 in her health bar does not seem to drain anywhere near as fast as you would think it would, or would hope it would if you're a viral fan or player at this point. Yeah. Because he just he walks back, he pops some damage reduction, he gets a little bit of boosted healing whenever he has that earthen guard available as well. So it just makes it so smooth for him to just stay alive. It really does, and you know, I mean, great stuff from the Barrack. I honestly feel like Barrack is, if you really look at his movement, it's almost like he's doing a little pirate jig, you know what I mean? Especially with that <laughs> outfit. He's just always sliding left and right, gets the bowling ball resets, gets the fail safe. He's just always just dancing on the point. And unfortunately, it results in Cyclone kind of looking, laughing, maybe paying for admission, but still going home with everything that they wanted. They're the ones who win here. Cyclone with a 2-0 lead in under about three minutes, I'd say. Really not a lot of contention at all from Team Viral. And honestly, that's more damage in such a small area than you would normally see. Even on Stone Keep, like even at a PPL level, right? Like you don't typically see that much damage concentrated so easily. And I think it's because Tully had kind of overextended compared to the rest of them, was going for the flank, exactly what you would want to do, but doing it in a very open area, caught out by Welsh Mania, that by the time anyone else was able to even think about where he was, yep. they're all cornered next to a king or next to a grumpy bomb with bombs damage from Ruckus, damage from Victor, all being thrown onto him. And that's a scary place to be. Wow, that's an interesting true power, and it ends up working out, I guess. Just, just leaves him up on the top ropes. He turns around and finds a Furious stunned. And I think that was as a result of the King Bomb, which left her getting healed, but you just can't out-heal a Hexafire from point-blank range. In fact, no, she doesn't get healed from her own beam. What am I talking about? She was just there looking pretty, but it didn't work out. And Gore, this is That's, also uh, why we talk about why that game three from in our last set was kind of cool because 
sometimes you just see these moments where a team yeah. kind of is like, I don't know what to do. It's and this so is, hard. yeah, this is exactly the dejected mentality, right? Where it's like, you're still fighting. Rankin is still putting up as best a fight as he can, but the team doesn't seem to be going in all together. You have Delane getting picked off on the side. Ranked is left by him, his lone zone. There's no healer with him. He's just fighting for the sake of fighting. Yeah. That's when it starts to be like, okay, you truly, as a team, have not come up with a strategy here. And again, for Viral, being fresh to the league against a team like Cyclone, who has not only been an org in the, in the lineup for a long time, but yep. has a lot of players that have been around for over a year, this is kind of what you expect. Like, this is. is no slight against Viral. This is probably the best practice you're going to get. Yeah. So, you know, and I think you understand at a certain point, how long does the 1v1 versus, uh, you know, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo need to go on as, like, a, a high school kid? Like, you know, you can do it. It's funny. Yeah. You know, playing against Lever, but then you're like, okay, he's just he's going to beat me every time. I, uh, let me practice a little bit more before I challenge you. And I think Team Viral, luckily, they're in the same league. They're just right now not at the same level of the way Cyclone GG are performing today. It just looks so clean. I mean, we're getting poppy bomb kills right there. Timing out the 150 damage. Beautiful stuff from Cyclone GG. It really wasn't a contest in game two or game three here, as it looks like they will push it in for success. Well, Dome Shield's going to come out the final that hurrah, but it just did not last long. No, that lasted about as long as Barry's health bar. That is, I mean, it'll sound kind of like a Band-Aid when you put it on there, but that is the best learning experience it for is. Viral. Because when you get in, especially when you qualify for the league, like you can come in thinking, cool, we made it. Like that's not the finish line. No. That's the starting line. Yeah. What you did was just the warm up beforehand. The qualifiers, that doesn't matter anymore. Now you have to be able to keep up in the race. And unfortunately, you went up against Usain Bolt. Listen, nothing like, uh, <laughs> you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and being like, oh man, maybe I gained a few pounds. I need a wake up call. Or maybe, you know, going up against yeah. someone who really puts you in your place. You're like, I got a lot of work to do. That's a really good thing to happen. That's how a lot of change positively goes on in life. So good luck to Team Viral as they continue in the league. But Cyclone GG looking good today. Let's send it back to the desk and break down set two of our PCO. Nick, I think I just had deja vu from game number two there because... More of the same. More of the same there from Cyclone GG and really hitting their stride like we expected them to. I mean, I know we said that Viral's an all-new team, and, and Cyclone yeah. has been around for a long time. But Viral held their own in that first map of this set, but just couldn't couldn't find their their stride really in, in the last few maps there. And we are going to jump into post-game stats here for map number three to see a little bit more how it broke down there. Yeah, and a big part of this was some of it was good rotations, but almost all of it revolved around for me Welsh Mania on the Ruckus. I loved his rotation in the first round when he kills at Talus, then goes up the enemy staircase and just sort of guns everybody else down. Kind of a lucky break, I guess you could say. That was such a weird, uh, I don't know, exchange where he gets right. he gets true powered into a Fury Beam. He's panicking, immediately hexifires at that point, finds a target, kills somebody. Right. That team fight was a mess, but sometimes, you know, that just shakes out in your favor, and that's sort of what happened there. But the initial team fights, that's kind of what decided this whole set for sure. me. It was almost like whoever won that initial team fight managed to grab the payload and go on the offense anyway, and there was only one that viral one and, was, and that Bright Marsh game where right. they did kind of hold their own a little bit. So Cyclone putting the foot on the gas very early yeah. on, keeping their foot on the gas and not really taking it off after they dropped three points there in map number one. And I know something you wanted to touch on looking back at map number one was the front line yeah. on Cyclone. I know that you were really not invested, but Kind of enjoyed about. the way that the the front line of Cyclone played. I was about it, right? You know, right. Smutney, like I, I was telling you before this set, he's a dude that I've been playing with since I was learning the game back on right. PC. He's a player that switched from PC to console, and he's, you know, at this point, he's got to have some confidence, right? He is really affecting these team fights, dragging Ash out of her ultimates, completely stonewalling DPS and healers from getting back to this the point fight to have any attempt to take it back. Really great Ancient Rages kind of throughout the game. Right. A guy like that is putting on display the experience and confidence that he has kind of gained over sure. these past three years of playing this game, right? Knowing when it's time to go do that, that's not something anybody tells you to go do as a frontline player. That's right. something you have to sort of just kind of like feel what's happening around you and realize that this is my time to go. It's my time to shine. Frontline players won this set for me on the side of Cyclone. Absolutely. So Cyclone rolling through to a 3 zero victory. We are going to jump into a quick break, but stick around. We got a lot more great Paladins action coming up. Stick around.